259, the Mexican Empire. The Mexican Empire, according to Clave Zero, was comprehended between the 14th and the 21st degree of north latitude between 271 and 283 degrees west longitude. From the meridian of Ferro, the Vale of Mexico was magnificently crowned with verdant mountains, whose circumference at their base exceeded 120 miles and environed about 40 in the mint cities, while innumerable villages and hamlets were scattered throughout this delightful valley, great part of which was occupied by two lakes, one of sweet and pure water, and the other of impregnated with salt water. The Toltecs, observes Clagero, volume 1, page 84, are the oldest nation of which we have any knowledge, and that is very imperfect. They affirmed that they had been banished from their mother country, Liu, Liu, Tal, Palan, ancient land of the Red Sea. The seven leagues, seven lineages, who afterwards inhabited that country and called it Mexico, affirmed that they had originally come from Atzland or Tio Alcohucan, the land of God, and declared it to be near the Amcumican, Garcia, page 182, in Antiquities of Mexico. The city of Mexico was first called Tinac Titlan after one of the ten chiefs of their lineage, Gage observes, that this name was probably derived from T. Enoch, the first chief, as the jubilee of the Mexicans occurred every 52 years, when the reign of each monarch terminated, and as it was customary to elect the new king or viceroy. On the arrival of that period, it is highly probable that the city of Mexico received that name at the first jubilee after their settlement in honor of their Messiah, Messiah being defined as the person that takes them from one land to another, whom they so devoutly expected when a capitizian the first king was anointed and crowned so it says on a late statistical note for the mexican empire see appendix now it picks up in the region of Izcotol, grandson of this monarch Academies were instituted for the study of astronomy, music, painting, history, and poetry. The city Tezcuco was divided into 30 districts, and each of these was assigned to the arts of sculpture, jewel making, weaving, temples, edifices, gardens, they were constructed by Nizahualco Zoto. Nizahualco Zoto was made 80 laws which had been recorded in manuscript. He ordered that lawsuits and trials for crimes should only last eight days. He was very charitable to the destitute, to the old, and to widows. To prevent bribery, he ordered that the judges should be, should be maintained and clothed at the expense of the government, according to their rank. In the cultivation of poetry and dramatic composition, 
The Mexicans were not deficient. Many of their expressions, observes Clochero, are so strong that they cannot be heightened, especially in the subject of love. In short, all those who have heard and learned this language and can judge of its copiousness, regularity, and the beautiful modes of speech are of opinion that such a language could not have been spoken by a barbarous nation. A people posed, possessed of such of so powerful a language could neither want orators nor poets. Even at present, the year 1750, reduced as they are to a state of great humiliation and retaining not their ancient institutions, they make or orations in their assemblies which are so replete with good sense and property, propriety, excuse me, as to excite the admiration of all here. The number of their orators was exceeded by that of their poets. In their verses, they were attentive to cadence and measure. Now, I should remind you of HBO's poetry. Right? This should remind you of rap itself. Remember, this started as barbershop quartets. It's moved its way towards what we've been told is rock and roll. Then it moved its way into jazz. This is the same beast. It's been changed into something very negative. The subjects that they, what, made poems about, that they talked about, that they were singing in cadence and measure, that's musical. They were various. Not like today, where it's just about sex. It revolves around sex. It's all just sex. And composed sacred songs in praise of their God. Or to obtain what they stood in need of. Orazio Oroki, uh, something of that nature. A Melanese Jesuit published some eloquent verses of the ancient Mexicans about the middle of the last century. These were sung in the temples at their sacred dances. It is related that one of these, one of the poets who was in prison for some misdemeanor, composed a dirge in prison in which he took leave of the world in so tender touching style that the musicians of the palace who were his friends advised him to sing it to the king who himself a celebrated poet and lover of music was so much affected that his crime not having been of the first degree he granted him a pardon so, again, that's no different than what you see today. So, you can always go over and look for the people or the list of people that Trump, since this is what time we're in, uh, is pardoned. And here you have Lil Wayne, Kodak Black, among four hip-hop figures who Trump has pardoned. Again, when you talk in the respects of, oh, they're so great, they're such great at poetry and, and, and their language, and you get into this, they're oppressed, put in uh, humiliation. Why? Because another a company has come and taken over their land, and they are put in prison for long terms for 
What does it say for misdemeanors? For misdemeanors. So this is 1750 published 1850. What year is it now? And what has changed? 